fasten your seatbelts. Back in the late 90s, the kart racing genre was heating up with the release of Nintendo's Mario Kart 64. A slew of competitors came forth to challenge Nintendo's dominance in the genre, including an unlikely entry from Naughty Dog. Some of you probably only know the studio as the developer behind the Uncharted series, but once upon a time, it developed a popular series called Crash Bandicoot, and its titular hero would go on to become Sony's mascot during the original PlayStation era. <laughs> The franchise got so popular that the creators decided to give Mario Kart a run for its money with a karting game featuring the orange marsupial. Crash Team Racing took a page from Mario Kart with its insane tricks and crazy power-ups, but also drew inspiration from Diddy Kong Racing by including an adventure mode with a massive hub environment and boss-style races. Crash Team Racing impressed fans and critics alike, and is still viewed by some as the best kart racing game of its generation. Nitrous Oxide, I'm the fastest racer in the galaxy. I travel the stars looking for creatures to test my skills. It's a little game I call Survival of the Fastest. As we've said time and time again, popularity is the perfect ingredient for a half-baked rumor. After its release in 1999, there were claims that you could unlock the game's final nemesis, Nitrous Oxide, as a playable character. Videos began to surface in the early 2000s, but there was skepticism that these were merely fabricated with the help of cheat devices or other means of hacking. The rumor has persisted for years and is still a point of contention among players, but we intend to shine the light of truth on this murky subject. Good luck, and drive fast. Though there have been slight variations to the purported way to unlock nitrous oxide, this is the method that came up the most in our research. First, you collect all of the platinum relics in the game's adventure mode, and then defeat nitrous oxide in the final challenge race. Once you've cleared this hurdle, move on into the time trial mode and earn a fast enough time to unlock the end trophy ghost on every track. You supposedly have to do the tracks in a specific order, starting with Crash Cove. Then, after you defeat his ghost on each track, the Nitrous Oxide Ghost will become unlocked. Once again, you'll need to play the tracks in a specific order, starting with Crash Cove. After you defeat all of the Nitrous Oxide Ghosts, return back to the main menu and input the following code. If you did this correctly, you should hear a sound effect confirming the code worked. Nitrous Oxide will then be yours for the choosing. Laboring for countless hours, we plowed through the entirety of the adventure mode, collecting every last Platinum Relic. We then defeated Nitrous Oxide in the final race, and turned to the crazy task of defeating the ghosts on each track, which proved to be rather difficult. Eventually, we had defeated every last Nitrous Oxide ghost and returned to the menu to input the code. However, the code never triggered a sound effect, and Nitrous Oxide was not available for play. Perhaps we'd overlooked something, so for the sake of being thorough, we went back and completed the adventure mode at 101%. It still didn't work. Then we resorted to downloading a save file with everything supposedly completed and collected, but the results were the same. While other cheat codes worked just fine, the nitrous oxide code did not. That still left us with the video evidence, which even viewed today looks convincing. Though it's possible with today's technology, it's hard to imagine back in the heyday of the PlayStation, anyone having the technical ability to hack new content into a console game. That's when we came across a thread on Neoseeker from 2004 that tried to organize a massive fan effort to get to the bottom of this rumor. Though much of the postings were idle speculation and hearsay, there was one user named Diego Ray who claimed to have found a code for a cheat device that would unlock nitrous oxide. Initially due to some confusion over region differences and code formatting variations between different devices, nobody could verify his claims and assumed it was another dead end. But eventually the codes were converted to suit the various cheat devices in different game versions, and fans began to claim they could race as nitrous oxide. <laughs> However, there were still skeptics. So we secured a GameShark device and tried out the codes on a retail PlayStation. Unfortunately, every time the game tried to load the race with nitrous oxide supposedly as our character, the game would freeze. That's when we resorted to using an emulator with our game disc. We inputted the GameShark code, and after some failed attempts, we were astonished when Nitrous Oxide became available for play. He only worked on a few courses, and at some point, the game would crash.
So technically, nitrous oxide is playable, but using an emulator to achieve it makes us skeptical as to whether Naughty Dog ever intended for this to be the case. Thankfully, we had a chance to sit down with Evan Wells, the current co-president of the company and one of the lead developers on Crash Team Racing, to finally solve this mystery. Surprise! I was a game designer back then. The team was really small. There was uh, 15 people, and I think uh, it was just uh, me and Dan Airy was the other game designer, so it was just two of us. Nitrous Oxide was never designed to be anything but the boss character that he was with the ship game. Um, we know a lot of people were digging for secrets. There's a lot of rumors out there about whether he was playable, whether he's unlockable if you beat all the ghost times or something like that, but um, it was a technical issue. We um, considered making him playable at one point, but we were under such just extreme memory limitations on the PlayStation 1. I mean, I think it had like two megs of memory or something in the entire system, so um, everything was just stripped down, and we actually had, even had to design his boss level specifically to keep in mind that his character model is going to be a little bigger than, than average. and. Uh, and so we just couldn't make them work across the whole game. We knew that people were hacking the game and Game Shark was sort of this big thing. In fact, uh, we would use it in the office ourselves because it allowed us to install this thing called Easy Array, which was Yarose spelled backwards, which was the, the thing that Sony actually gave out to, to fans to do homebrew style PS1 games. And so somebody actually made their own that you could install on, on Game Shark, and we used it in the office because it would give us better data dumps when the game crashed uh, to see the call stacks and, and the registers. Over the course of development a lot of things change. Um, we had a change to the, the roster of characters. Originally we were going to try to have Pura and Polar be just one character. They're going to ride in one cart together but again because of the memory limitations we couldn't actually get both of them in one cart and Komodo, Mo and Joe were both supposed to show up but um, one of them had to sit on the sidelines. Um, and, uh, and then uh, early on in development when we were actually still just trying to prototype the game. This is back I think when we were still working on Crash Bandicoot 3 in fact um, in the early days of CTR, we were doing some uh, overlapping development. Um, we actually built an entirety, our entire replica of Crescent Island from Diddy Kong Racing because we wanted to say, okay, this is a track we know is fun to play. In another game, we want to make sure that we can reproduce a, 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 a track of that scope and scale on the PS1. Um, and so we built that in its entirety, pirate ship and all, and uh, we were able to prove that, okay, yeah, we can actually build this environment, we can fit it in memory, frame rate, all that stuff works. Um, of of course, it never saw the light of day. It was never supposed to. We were copying somebody else's work, um, so it's just for a test. But um, you know, it's probably on our uh, server somewhere. You beat me once again. Now I have to go back to the planet Gasmoxia, a complete loser. So there you have it. Though it's possible through the use of cheat devices to unlock nitrous oxide, Naughty Dog never intended for him to be a playable character in Crash Team Racing. The trophy's mine. See this and other GT shows and game reviews on the GT Originals iOS app, available now on the App Store.